It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. They're learning how to shoot and learning how to light. Learning how to mic and edit right. These are TCTV's finest in training. Doing their best with focusing and framing. It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. You're watching TCTV. It's the Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. They will get better. Welcome to this second Saturday in the TCTV training show. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, today we're going to talk about media transitions. What we're going to do today is go through the steps of making our own custom media wipe and um, loading it into the switcher and show you how to use them. Um, that's the, if you guys want to see, Whoa, that is, that slime wipe is a, the first example of a media wipe that I have made as a little example. And as you see, if I pull the fader bar here, what we have is a, it's really a, a bunch of images, still images that we combine to make a media transition. And so the main principle is that we're going to create basically a video that covers the whole screen and then goes off the screen. When we bring that into the switcher, it will uh, you know, cover the screen and then switch to the other camera shot. Um, and that way we can do all kinds of things. Like we can do something like the slime wipe. We can, um, we can even you know, show the logo of our show. Uh, we've got the TCTV training show logo. I think we're going to use this logo and animate it so that it um, covers the screen and goes away. That's one of the things we'll do today. Um, you also maybe notice that it has a sound effect in, in the um, audio. Go ahead and play it one more time. Um, that is another thing that we can do. It's very easy. So essentially, not only will you do a transition, but you also have a little uh, sound. You know, sometimes on the news shows, they'll go like, you know, it'll have more of a whoosh sound effect or something like that. That's essentially the outline of what we're going to be doing today. This is the front of the carbonite switcher. This is going to be a part where you're going to want um, the member services team to help you. And essentially what we have is a USB device that's plugged into um, the Ross switcher. And usually you'd have one that it says carbonite. This is the main one. But you can always bring your own USB and you can save the image files that you can bring into the switcher and um, save your custom presets and things like that. But uh, when you're installing it, just grab one of the member services team. We will take the cover off and do that it's just to make it safe. Now, I'm going to show you what that slime wipe, we all remember what it looks like. Is it still there? Okay, it's still there. It's going to pop up on the screen here in a second. I've got a little folder in here called Media Transitions. Um, and you see here there's one that's called Slime Wipe. That's what we've been doing. And what you'll notice is that the slime wipe is actually 30 individual still images. And um, we're not going to be making these still images, you know, one by one. We're going to do this in Final Cut or some kind of program like this. Um, on the handout, I've listed that the, the three programs that I can think of that would be the best to do this would be Final Cut, Photoshop, and Motion. If you've taken one of the Motion classes that we offer here at um, TCTV, that would be another way where you could make maybe even much more sophisticated ones than what we, we have uh, going here with motion because you can get some 3D stuff going and all that. But as you can see, it's 30 different frames. And since we're running at 30 frames per second, uh, this was about a second long transition. So with the media wipes, you, the length of transition is determined by the amount of um, frames that we have. And then at the bottom, I have a little uh, thing here that's slime.wave. I'm talking about a couple of the principles that are going to be important as we go along, uh, you'll notice that each of the titles of the images is, the, is a name, an underscore, and then a number. And they're sequential. That's so that the <coughs> switcher can recognize them as a sequence that it's going to play through. And then naming the audio file with the same name as the name of the sequential images tells it that that's you know, not just a random file, but that's actually the audio file that we played while 
the transition is happening. Pretty question. Yeah. Um, when you bring your USB to load your material, should your uh, sequential series and your audio file be the only thing on that um, chip? No. And in fact, um, you're going to have what I have here is a couple different things. You can actually view all of these things through the switcher once you have it all set up. In fact, in this switcher zone here is a folder that the ROS Carbonite is going to create on your USB. That's where it would save like custom controls and memories that you can make and even settings that you uh, set up on the switcher. So you can save your own stuff in there. This is essentially, once you plug it in, um, you've got your media transitions that I have as a folder, but you've also got places where you can have sound effects that you can play from the switcher. You can put still images that you can you know, use as backgrounds and things like that. You can put all of that stuff on the USB and then use it on there. So you don't have to have it just the media transitions. Okay, so how do we go from um, taking a video and then getting it to these still images? Um, we're going to start off using everybody's favorite program, Final Cut Pro. And we're going to open that up. Um, and what I have here is just a, a regular library. We've got, I've named it Media Transitions, and I've got elements here. And I've got a sound effect that we're going to create the wave with. And then I've got this TCTV training show logo, and we're going to try to um, animate this and then use it as a media transition. Now, the main thing we're going to do is what's called keyframing. Uh, it's a little bit, it's, it's not necessarily taught in the um, regular video editing software, but you're probably used to using it for the um, audio, like setting a point where the audio is at this volume and setting a point where the audio is at another volume. And in between those two points, it kind of transitions from one volume to the other <coughs> volume. We're going to be using the same kind of principle uh, to make motion. If it's, if it's not making sense, we can come back to it later, or you can ask one of the member services people at a later time when you're doing editing, and we can explain more of that. So let's create a new project. Um, and what, what you want is, we're just going to say training wipe. And we're going to put it in the event elements. What I'm going to have you do is make sure that your dimensions of your project are set to 1920 by 1080 and 29.97 <coughs> frames per second. That's the full frame of the video switcher, and that way, uh, when you load in the effect, when it covers up the whole screen, it's actually covering <coughs> up the whole screen. So here we go. I'm going to hit OK. And now we've got um, a blank timeline. I'm going to drag down this training bumper logo here. And right now, when we hit play, it just kind of sits there. But what I'm going to do first is we're going to uh, we're going to shrink this down so that it's what do you think? Maybe one second long? Yeah, uh, we'll do a one second long transition. And I'm just going to zoom in so that we get a good look at it. OK, what we're going to do is I'm going to start by clicking on our logo. And we're going to go to the inspector over here, choose video. And inside of transform controls, we're going to set some keyframes. And what the way we're going to do this is we're just going to go to this position control, which is the x and y coordinates of the image and hit the little diamond there to save a thing. Hit it for the scale as well. That's how big and small it is. Those are the only two we're really going to mess with today. And what I'm going to do is we're going to move the training show bug off the screen. And well, let's go to about halfway through. And I'm going to try to fill the frame up. Then I'm going to move to the end of the wipe. And now what I'm doing is I'm setting a third key point at the end where it's off the side. So each time I change a uh, value that already has a key point on it, it's, it makes a new one at this new location. So you set the first key point, then you move. So the first key point is about here. And then you see as I drag through here, the second key point is right there. And then it goes like that. So when we play it, it's just a second long. Shoosh. And so you have the ability to change the parameters after you've done it. Yeah, and just to just a quick look at that, what happens is you can see the key points are lit up here now still. If you click to the right and left of this box, it'll show the lit up gold diamond. That means that you're actually hovering over the point that you're going to adjust the value of the attribute. Oh, Freddie, yes. One, 
small point. Mm -hmm. That TCTV training show is, it appears here on a black background. Yeah. But in fact, it is a transparent background. That's right. Um, if we put Ooh. something else underneath it, for example, I'll just put this image of clouds. We drop that underneath, and you see that what it actually is is it's over the top of kind of just the transparent blankness. Now, this would be a great time to talk about what's called alpha channels. So you guys know that there's four channels, essentially, of video. The three colors, red, green, blue. And so that's what's making up this image. We've got a lot of yellow, and then the three colors are making up all the things. There's a fourth channel, though, called the alpha channel, um, which in, essentially you can think of it as the invisible channel. It's, it's, a, it's a information that comes along with pictures and video that essentially tells it that this zone here is not black, it's actually transparent. Think about it as, you know, all of this stuff has color value and it also has either a, you know, visible or transparent value on this alpha channel. And all the stuff that's black here on the, um, on the video is going to be in the alpha channel. But we've got essentially a pretty, we'll watch it one more time. Swoosh. Yeah, pretty nice. Um, quick little bumper. You know, uh, just to throw the other element in here too, I'm going to um, put a little bit of audio on this as well. And um, we have a little thing where it says training show. Hopefully it's a second long. Let's see if I can shrink it down. This is not any kind of special audio right now. We're going to have to get it to be a wave. But for now, I'm just going to drag it to the timeline as if it were anything else and shrink it so that it uh, fits into the time I need right there. So that's one second long now. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to export this now. So we've, got our, we've essentially made our animation. Now that we've finished building our media transition in Final Cut, we're going to export it as an image sequence. In the File menu, select Send to Compressor. Even if you have a Final Cut image sequence preset, you'll need to use the Compressor. Otherwise, it won't keep the alpha channel, which is the transparent part. Inside of Compressor, Drag the PNG image sequence preset onto your media transition job. The custom preset on the TCTV computers uses the .png file type. The PNG is nice because it actually transfers that alpha channel. That's why I'm recommending PNG. A JPEG never has transparency on it. The PNG does. It's going to come out already at 1920 by 1080 because we set that as the project earlier. Right click the location on the job and send it to somewhere you'll remember. For now, we'll just send it to the desktop. Now just click the Start Batch button in the bottom right of the screen, and Compressor will turn your video into a folder of sequential still images. It's actually going to make a folder of these files called Training Wipe, and it's not going to take very long. But in the meantime, I think we also need to um, make this WAV file. If your Media Wipe has sound, you could add the custom preset WAV for Switcher onto the Compressor job. Or you could do it from Final Cut by going to File, Share and choosing Wave for Switcher. The Wave for Switcher preset simply makes a mono wave file with a sample rate of 48 kilohertz and a sample size of 16 bits, which is what the Carbonite Switcher likes. So let's see what we've got. We shared two files. We shared an image sequence and we shared an audio file. And on the desktop, we've got our wave here and we've got our folder of images. We've got training wipe folder. Let's go ahead and open up Training Wipe folder. And the first thing you'll notice is that it's not the correct file structure. What we see here is we've got frame and a dash and, uh, and then the number, but the switcher is not going to recognize that. We have a little program here called File Rename, and we're going to rename these files with the right structure. It's a little robot there that will rename our video or our picture files. I'm going to do that. Double click it, it'll ask you to choose a finder item. Just select the training wipe folder and select all your image files here. We got PNG 1 through or 0 through 29. I'm going to hit choose and it gives us these options. Uh, first, it's going to make sequential. This is all on the handout. Um, and then, new name, we're going to call this training. And then uh, place number after name separated by underscore. Start numbers at one and make all numbers three digits long. Pretty much all you got to do is put the name. It's going to be set to these presets. 
But what you see now here is the example is going to be training underscore 001 dot xxx, which is PNG. So we go continue, and suddenly all of our files are magically named the right thing. The final thing is going to be <laughs> dragging this uh, audio file into the training wipe folder, and now we can load this into the USB disk. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to put it onto the disk and put it into media transitions. Okay. So we eject the USB disk from the computer and put it back into the switcher right here. But like I said, you're going to get one of uh, the member services team to help you do this. It's just a little USB uh, slot right in the switcher. Um, okay. We're going to go over to the switcher part now. So what we've got here is a bunch of the transition buttons. We're familiar with dissolve and wipe. And we probably you probably don't know much about DVE. That's another one. But you know the dissolve fades like this. Uh, the wipe gives you a wipe like this. DVE actually does some crazy stuff where it flies <laughs> the image back. Um, that's not even a custom one. That's just built into the switcher. The final thing is going to be media. And Media wipe, right now we've still probably got our, our slime wipe loaded in, but now we want to load in our new one. You see how this, is, this button is lit up green? Anytime you get a green light, that means that it has a menu open. So you actually have the menu right there is now referring to whatever green key is lit up. So when you hit media wipe, the menu key goes green and this information screen up here is now active and is the menu for the media wipes. Another thing you'll notice is that the next button is lit up. That means that there's another page to this menu. You hit the next button once and you'll see the word browse. We're going to hit browse. This is also, you can follow along a little bit on the handout. It's under number six. Button turns green, opens the menu, press next, find browse. Every time you want to move around inside of this menu, you press the button down to make a selection and you rotate the wheel to look at a different menu. So I'm going to go all the way back. We're going to start by pressing the media transition button, which brings this menu up. This lets us choose some things about media transitions. I'm going to hit next and then we're going to browse. I'm going to hit browse. We're going to go USB, press down to select, rotate to the folder media transitions. Then we're going to scroll through Anubis slime wipe and training wipe. Let's go to choose training wipe. Now when I press down and I select, it says uh, training.png 30 in brackets and it has a dot wave after it, meaning there's sound effects too. I hit the button, it's loading. Check this out. This screen is showing us what we have on our media stores. You know, it, it starts out on the, U on the USB disk, but it's storing it inside of the switchers media stores. In the case of a media transition, you're actually using two spots in the media stores. You're using one for the main color picture and one for the alpha channel. Two and four both stay training because it has to load it both in there to keep the transparency correct. There's four media stores, M1, M2, M3, M4. That's where you are probably used to like saving a still image like that you can put behind a green screen, or even you can get little loops of pictures where it's uh, cycling through. Ten more frames to load. It's ready now. Ready to try it? Let's try it, you guys. Here we go. Ready? There we go. Oh, that's right. Look at this. If we pull, it, it, cuts, the, it cuts before uh, the wipe happens. What's it doing? See, when we start the wipe, it, it, has, it already changes away. before before mm -hmm. the thing goes in front. Oh! But what we're gonna do is well, here, let me show you. Well, can you can you see that when we pull the when I push I start pushing the fader, watch how the image changes before the video go, crosses in front of it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. instead of after. We yeah, want it to we want after. remember how we made the, made sure that it filled the screen at a certain point. Yeah. We want it to cut at the point when it fills the screen, that's where it switches between the cameras. Right now, it's switching the camera as soon as I touch the button. You know, it cuts there and then... Okay. So what we want to do is we want to move the 
uh, with the fader arm, we're going to actually change it so that it fills the whole screen right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the media button, <laughs> and then we're going to press cut. And it doesn't look like anything happened, um, except for you might notice that the the thumbnail, the thumbnail has changed so that it's showing right at the very center of our shot instead of at the edge. What we did was we um, we're just telling the switcher moving at what point, point. Yeah, essentially okay. moving the uh, point where it switches cameras. And nothing happens between the two. Yes. Okay. So so what you've got here is you've got camera one and camera two and then you've got an animation over the top of it, mm -hmm. and we want it to switch the cameras at the point when the animation is covering the whole screen so that it's seamless. And that's um, what we have now. If we even pull it slowly, Jump. Jump. you see that yeah, yeah. it does a, a very effective transition. So that's the thing that you're going to have to do every time you load a new media transition. Once you actually get it loaded and get the cut point set, it will save it every time you load that back up until you pull the thumb drive out. And so once you've got that set, I really do recommend using the auto transition button because you can do it with the fader if you want to get to go a little bit slower, but it's set up at a specific timing. So it'll look best if you do it with the auto transition button because that'll just do it for the amount of time that it exists. And that should sync up with the audio that you have attached. Here's it with the auto transition. Show. Yeah. I think that if I was to do it again, I would kind of adjust the audio a little bit so that it fits a little bit better inside of the, uh, like, so it hits a little bit later. But you can play with that by making a little bit of space and, like, empty noise at the beginning of the audio. So if you wanted to time it out, you kind of, like, you know, you're going to play with it a little bit and fine tune it. But this is pretty good for what, you know, for just a, a quick, um, a quick transition. That's essentially the whole thing. You load them and save them onto your USB, which you can take with you. You know, you bring a USB and then you can use it with the switcher. Um, so now we've got the slime wipe. And then I would have to go to browse, go out to select training wipe, and get that one loaded in, and auto transition. <laughs> so we can do both, and it, you can switch between them really quick once they get loaded in there. Once they're all loaded in there, you can kind of switch between them um, without having to wait for them all to load. So what you would do is if you had maybe four different transitions that you knew you wanted to do, you would um, set them up beforehand, load them in, but it is really something that once you get multiple in there, you're probably going to want to learn how to do custom controls, which is um, a part of the advanced switcher class that's coming up at the end of the month. That's like the next advanced step because the thing you don't want to do is to have to go out, select the folder, and load it in. Every time you are wanting to do a different media transition, because that takes too much time, you know, to like navigate through the menus and stuff like that. With custom controls, you can have it automatically select the custom wipe that you want to do and automatically transition with the custom wipe. You don't have to switch to the media wipe and hit the button. You just have in your custom controls row different <laughs> transitions depending on what uh, what you want. There is ways to make it faster. It's just you got to learn custom controls. Yes, Tom. Now you always well, go back down to you the, load in. the top USB to make it reload what's on the USB drive so it gets a fresh copy. So when you make changes, it gets the latest copy. Right. Well, once you take the USB out, um, all it has is the stuff that's loaded into the media stores now. Okay. Um, when you put a new USB in and go to load the one from the USB, it'll automatically make a new one. Okay, so I don't, if I take, take it out, make an update to it, put it back in, I will get the latest copy off That's the right. USB. That's right. Once you take the USB out, if you try to load something from the USB again, it will load it fresh, even if it has something of the same name. But so there's no eject on the, on that, on the switcher side. You don't need it's to worry on about it. the computer it. side, we have to do the eject. Yeah, I guess the only time that it would probably be a problem to eject is during the actual process where it's loading the custom wipe into the switcher. Once it's on the switcher, it's not even referencing the, um, okay. the card anymore. And that's what it's doing when you're switching between multiple wipes <coughs> during a production without having to load. It's all saved in this, uh, which has a, it has a, a kind of a small hard drive. How, uh, many will these, how many will these back up and hold a dozen for a show? I think you could do at least six custom ones that are like a second to two seconds long. 
So it's not really a matter of how many transitions can you fit in there, but it's kind of a <laughs> file size. You know, if you make one really, really long thing that's taking up spots in your media store, then that will make it so you can't have as many. And then I think even having the audio file does it a little bit. But having them in PNGs with you know a very short wave, it's pretty small. So I think we can fit a lot on there. Um, like I said, haven't found the upper limit yet. Tentatively would say, you know, six. six. Training show. Thanks for tuning in to the TCTV training show. And uh, you can always come to TCTV on the second Saturday of each month for a free training workshop just like this one. Um, we'll see you next time. You can watch the TCTV Training Show on TCTV Channel 77, Sundays at 3.30 p.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m., and Saturdays, 11 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. Or you can watch any episode online on YouTube or at our website, tctv.net. That's also where you can find a full calendar of our classes and media production. Just go to tctv.net and click on Training. And you can always count on a free workshop on the second Saturday of each month from noon to one at 440 Yager Way. It's open to the public. The learning never stops here at Thurston Community Television. They will get better.